Well, the Lord be with you, dear saints. Thanks for joining us today, the 7th of March, and we continue marching into the book of John. Today we are in John chapter 12, and our psalm for today is a psalm that we know very well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the psalm for today as we gather, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Well, that's one of the psalms that that comes up a lot. We quote that psalm a lot. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord. This is a psalm that's used many times, uh, especially in funerals of people who have lived in this region, who have lived in the Black Hills. I lift up my eyes to the hills. But we might just be missing the meaning. It isn't, I lift up my eyes to the hills and look at the beauty that God has created. The psalmist is actually saying, as they're traveling down the road, they lift up their eyes to the hills, wondering where their help is going to come from, because who is hiding in the hills? The thieves, the robbers, the highwaymen, And as Israel travels, and especially as they go up to Jerusalem for the ascent, uh, the ascent psalms, they go up to Jerusalem there to be uh, in the city for Passover and things, they travel together and they know that threats are around them. They know that in the hills is hiding those who would want to rob them and take their life. So their cry is to God during this time. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? And then what does the psalmist say? He drives right back to a confession of faith. My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Do you see the great hope there? The psalmist recognizes that there are threats and perils around, but he doesn't rely on himself. He doesn't give way to fear. My hope, my help is in the Lord. And what a great thing that is for us, a great confession of faith as we look around in the world around us and we see this is out of our hands, our help comes from the Lord. Well, let's jump into the gospel reading for today. This is John, the 12th chapter, starting at the second part of verse 36, 36b through the end of the chapter. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah says, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. 
And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my word and does not keep them, I judge him. For he did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Excuse me, I need to back up to verse 47. If anyone hears my word and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken of my own authority, but of the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there's a lot in here as we we unpack the Gospel of John, and it echoes again like it does so many times back to the Psalms. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. This section of John chapter 12, as we gather and as we dive into this, has a lot to say about unbelief and how do people believe and and what happens if they don't believe. And as we go through this, it can be, we can fall into a trap that Christianity fell into a long time ago, thinking that, that somehow God chooses some to be saved and he chooses some to be damned. And when we listen to those verses from Isaiah, we can get a hint of that, that God actually does choose some people not to be saved. That is not true. That is a poor interpretation of God's word. Remember, when Jesus comes into our world, he tells us clearly, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That Jesus' very purpose in our world is to die on the cross for the sins of all mankind, not just those God has chosen to save. God has chosen to save all mankind. Now, the question that comes up then is if God has chosen to save all mankind through the power of his word and the death and resurrection of his son that atoned for the sin of all the world, why are some not saved? And a poor interpretation of the text would say because God chose some to be damned. A better interpretation, the correct interpretation, is to say that we have chosen that man has chosen to go to hell by resisting the gifts that God has given to us. So when Jesus dies on the cross, the sins of every sinner are atoned for in God's eyes. But if, if I would choose to say, I don't believe God's word, I don't believe what he said, that gift of the forgiveness of sins that's already won for me, I reject it and say, I don't want that. Now, without the gift, without faith, without the clothing of Christ's righteousness covering me, I will never be allowed in the wedding feast. Now, should I be able to say God sent me to hell? Absolutely not. Because the gift was there, one for you on the cross, the Holy Spirit continues to call, gather, enlighten us through God's word. But if I choose to reject that, if I choose to be not where the word of God is preached, if I choose to believe another gospel, something different than what God says in his word, my not going to heaven, my damnation, is not because of God. It's because of my hard heart. Now remember, dear saints, God knows all things. God knows who will be in heaven and who will be in hell. But that does not mean that God chooses some to be in heaven and some to be in hell. He knows very clearly what will happen, but in the gift of salvation, it is our rejection of God's gifts that causes damnation, not God himself choosing some to go to hell. As John writes this, as Jesus says this, there is something in here that that draws us together, that helps us to see that what Jesus says and what God's intention is, is always the same and always correct. 
It's a common thing in our world today for people to dissect different parts of Christianity, to dissect God's word and say, well, I believe in this part and I believe in that part, but I don't like this and I don't believe that. And somehow we have, uh, many people have believed that, that we can do this, that we have the authority to say this part of the scripture I like and this part I don't or this part I believe in and that part I don't and think that somehow we'll be okay. Well, remember, Jesus himself reminds us that your word, God, is truth. And Jesus didn't qualify it and say only the New Testament or only those things that are easy to believe in. Jesus says, your word is truth. God's word is truth, all of this. So if we deny a part of God's word... We do not have the luxury to say that, well, I believe in most of it, just not that. That's not what the Word says. God's Word is true, all of it, given by God for us, for our salvation. So for someone to say, well, I believe in what you're doing in church, but I don't like the part about the sacraments, then you're missing part of God's Word. Then you are doubting and maybe even unbelieving God's word. So we teach. We continue to put the word before us because it is the preaching and the teaching of God's word that makes disciples, that helps us to push by, push back our unbelief and believe what Jesus said in his word. Now you might have already put the pieces together where I'm going with this. Our old sinful Adam, my old sinful Adam and yours as well, does not want to hear God's word. It continually pushes against us, no matter how long you've been Christian, no matter how long you've been in in God's word, our old nature always wants to push back and say, you don't need it. You don't need it today. You don't have time for it. There's more important things going on. Our old nature always wants to push aside the word of God. Just roll over and have a nice nap on Sunday morning or a second cup of coffee. It's not that important that you go to church. That's what our old nature always wants to say. Uh, It's okay for me to be at home and listening online instead of going and actually being in church. Hear me out. That is a way that Satan wants to separate us. Is it okay to be at home and to hear God's word if you're sick or if you're not able to get out? Yes, it is a good option. But for those who are able, for those who are are mobile, for those who can come to church, sitting at home and watching online is a second option, not as good as the first. God wants us to be together in community. Can you hear God's word through a Sunday morning service online? Absolutely you will, and the Holy Spirit will work with you. But you are not in the presence of the body of Christ, of your brothers and sisters. We are never called to be separated. We are always called to be joined together as the body. And what you don't receive at home, if you're watching the the divine service, is you don't receive Holy Communion. Now, Pastor and I, are we bring that out to you. We, bring, we go and see our, our shut-ins and our sick, and we bring them the Lord's Supper. But it's always better, if you can and if you're able, to be in his presence and receive the gifts of the word preached and the sacrament given, because it's in those things where God strengthens us. It's in those things where he pushes back the evil one who whispers in your ear, you don't need to be there or you don't need to have this or believe in this. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. Not my ability, not my reason or my strength, but what God himself has done through his word given to us And through our Savior Jesus Christ, who has come into our world, died and risen and given us the absolute promise that salvation has been accomplished for you by his death and given to you in faith. This is the word of the Lord for this day. Thanks be to God. And when we look at the creed today, when we talk about matters of belief and understanding, we come back to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for this day and the gifts you have given to us. Strengthen us, Father, now in the preaching and the teaching of your word, that we may continually run to your word and promises and receive that strength and live in joy in the forgiveness that is ours in Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, thanks for the day today. Join me again tomorrow. Tomorrow's devotion will occur. It will post again at 6 a.m., and you'll have it for the beginning of your day. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.